Rosetta High School for Lake Conference Wrestling as tonight the Trojans play host to their rivals from Hopkins. Hi, I'm Jay Wilcox along with Jay Perry and a pretty good start to the season for the Wyzetta team right now. They're they're building towards section time obviously but uh, you know they've done some good things. they got some good individuals and it uh, looks like this one tonight should be in the books for them because Hopkins has a, a you know shortened lineup with some forfeits yeah we really should come out and obviously we always teach in the room that you want to wrestle to the level that you wrestle at not to the wrestle the level of your opponents and i think obviously with um them having kind of a shorter lineup tonight um on paper it looks like why is that it should be really heavily favored and and as uh, long as we perform up to our expectations uh it should be a, um, a match that goes to Wyzetta, but obviously we got to rest that's why you wrestle it some good uh, individuals definitely for Hopkins, looking at 26 and 32, uh, 126 and 132 obviously too, uh, with uh, Nate Johnson at 132 and Jesse Sattler. So even when, you know, maybe the dual score might end up lopsided, it's still fun to see those, you know, potentially really good ones along the way. Yeah, that's why you love to see the individual matches and you got to always focus on the things and it really helps everybody get better and, and obviously those matches are going to be I think pretty exciting um, the, the, the individual matches and that's something to look forward to and hopefully we see some of that good wrestling that we came here tonight for so it should be exciting. A few of the YZ guys will because of match counts will you know some other top guns we may not see but we'll see quite a few of the really good ones too and that should be fun. Yeah I mean obviously um, you know, we got some guys that are really kind of close in the match count. We got always got to be careful in that. But there's some in the lower weights um, that should be pretty good, and then also kind of in the upper middle weights. Um, obviously, highlighting a couple guys that I think want to wrestle. It's their senior night, so they're going to put out a good show and uh, do their very best. So it should be a fun night. All right, Hopkins and Wyzetta wrestling. It's on the way next year on CCX Sports. What makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood or when people know your name? Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. As life gets busier than ever, we will still offer you a connected community experience through CCX Media so you can stay connected to the place you call home. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter. But this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. And welcome back here to Wyzetta High School as the coaches and captains meeting with our referee for tonight, Dan Roth, getting set uh, for this Lake Conference duel and getting the coin flip going here. And uh, it is senior night for these Wyzetta guys, you know, kind of a low key match a little bit. But uh, for the guys that have gone through this program, I mean, this is kind of a nice recognition that there's a lot of hard work that's been put in, not only on match night, but obviously even more so during the uh, in the wrestling room. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think 
I'm a little bit biased here, but wrestling and we are is a very tough sport. And uh, when you, uh, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that goes in, not only in the practice room. You know, some of these guys have been with the program a long time, and I think, uh, you know, they deserve, you know, the credit and uh, the recognition that they get tonight. So we look forward to an exciting match, and hopefully uh, we'll see what uh, we got going on here tonight, and hopefully to display the talent and everything else they've learned throughout the years. At 106 pounds, Fort Wyzetta, the sophomore, Matt Valerius. Matt Valerius for Wyzetta will receive a forfeit in the 106 pound category. And so the Trojans get a quick six points from that. And it is, as we understand, it's probably going to be the same situation at 113. There's a look at Coach Eric Swenson for the Trojans. At 113 pounds, Four boys at a, the freshman, Cole Chardelli. And a winner by forfeit. Cole Chardelli is going to win by forfeit as well for the Trojans. We should have our first actual match here at 120. There's a look at Al Price, the Royals head coach. Al been around their program for a long time back as head coach as of the middle of last year. And we'll go to 120. Eddie Heimer for Hopkins and Roan Zaragoza for Wyzetta. And this should be a really even match. Um, I know their wrestlers around the 500 mark, and um, Roan's, you know, a little under 500, but uh, he's getting better every week, and uh, we'll see what he can do. They get to the edge right away, and off the mat they go, so bring them back to the middle here. Heimer with a shot on the leg, and he will, nothing yet. Nothing yet. Now he gets his two. Good shot from him, um, a really good takedown. We'll see what happens here. So Heimer, a two nothing lead. And score the escape for Zaragoza. So now a two to one lead for Heimer. Two to one, Hopkins. There you go. Good shot by Roan. And on the edge, and he gets his two, so. So Zaragoza will take the lead here as they get to the edge. Both wrestlers seem to be staying fairly aggressive on their feet, so that's good to see. Heimer trying to sit out right away, but Zaragoza able to flatten him back out and see if he can work from there. See if he can use the wrist ride here, but keep him flat. Now uh, to 20 to go here in this first period. It's been a good one so far at 120. Heimer's looking to get an escape, if not a reversal. And not able to do it as the time will wind down. He looked like he was about halfway up there, but uh, Zaragoza kind of tightened it back down. And boy, those end of the period points can, can seem really big in a match. It maybe didn't seem like that much just to hold them down there, but you never know. It can be the, the difference in the, the match. Right, and obviously as the, as the duel goes, the longer the match goes, obviously the, the more tired they get. So those early points are also a lot of times uh, crucial as you get into the, toward the end of the match. Heimer getting to his feet here, but. Off the edge he'll go, and still Zaragoza leading at three to two. Still riding him pretty well. I mean, obviously he's still, he likes that wrist ride, so he's really trying to use that and score points with it. 
So we'll see what happens. Quick switch here, and Heimer gonna get his two on the reversal. Yep, Heimer did it. That was a really good switch on his. He was ready to go on the whistle, so looking for a cradle possibly. Rowan trying to pick those hands apart. And Ooh. looks like he's got an opportunity for a switch as well. Yeah. And was, there's two. That was a good reversal. He did, came down to the mat and really made an ex executed the move right away so he didn't lay there. So that was a good move on Rowan's part. Besides being helpful in terms of, you know, the, the match itself, but also the less time he spend just, you know, Getting, getting ridden or whatever is going to take a lot of energy out of you as well. So you might as well go for it right away. Correct. Oh, yeah, and he's really, he really, this is hard because he's, he's controlling on top and making uh, Heimer really work to get, a, get an escape or something. So, but it's, they're very evenly matched. So it's a good, one of those things you like to see is a good close match and exciting. Trying to throw a cradle on here. Winding down in the second period, under 15 seconds to go. And that's how the period's gonna end here. Five to four, Zaragoza. Coach Swenson telling Zaragoza to take down here to begin this third. Now it starts to get a little bit more on the conditioning side here this last, this third period. So we'll see who has something left in the gas tank and uh, can execute and finish out the duel here, or the match. And once we've gotten into, you know, the mid-January part now, you're, you're figuring and there's no more excuses about not being in shape at this That's point. right, exactly, they, you know, Keeping your head off the mat, you know, moving. There should never be something where you're just laying there this time of year. Oh, that was a good reversal. Right on the edge, we'll see if one shoulder off the mat outside the circle. Now he might get the fall. We'll see. Zaragoza able to pull him back on into a pinning position. Now he has Ooh. to let it go. Two point near fall. Give him two on the near fall and then an escape, so it should be nine to four. Five now, I believe, or is it four? Yeah. Nine five. Forward, 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 forward. A lot of time left, so they got to stay aggressive. Next takedown will be very big here. Heimer's still got time, but obviously down by four, he needs to start to make something happen here. Yeah, he really needs to initiate, and obviously Roan looks like he's not gonna let him. He took the shot. See if he can finish on the... Nope. Heimer tried to counter by slapping a little headlock on, and it was enough to fight it off on the takedown. Looked like for a moment he was definitely gonna get it. Sometimes it just comes down to determination too, knowing where you're at, so... Um, but Heimer's got to make some ha things happen here if he wants to catch up. Rowan's got good defense here. He's really staying in good position, so really making Heimer work for a takedown. And doing just enough on top that he's not gotten uh, any stalling. Yeah, if anything, well, sometimes it could be a stalemate, if anything, but I don't think it's going to happen. Then. So Zaragoza will win it 9-5 to five here for the Trojans in our first actual match of the night after a couple of forfeits, so a 15 nothing lead. Get a look at Zaragoza with a reversal here. Heimer, halfway through that, I think, kind of realized, uh oh, oh, this this wasn't what I wanted to do here. As is, he had his uh, grip broken. Yep, 
I think he got hung on, you know, he's down in the bottom too long and made it really hard to get finish his takedown. And for Wyzetta, the freshman Royce Hogue. Jesse Sattler for Hopkins and Royce Hogue here for Wyzetta. Sattler, one of the definite top guns here for Hopkins. Yeah, and I think in this match going into it, he's probably favored a little bit. Obviously a two-time state entrant. Um, he's like 14 and two on the year. Uh, but Royce, uh, you know, ninth grader, pretty seasoned for a ninth grader too. He's not gonna back down. So it should be a good duel and an opportunity for, uh, to, for Royce to, to get better tonight too. So we'll see what happens. A lot of times a younger guy too, you see, instead of being you know, intimidated by facing a, an older guy with some history behind him, you see it as an opportunity. You know, this would be big for me if I could go out and get him. Yep, and I think he, you know, he's a kid that's not gonna back down. He really works hard in the room, but also you cannot make mistakes or a seasoned guy like this guy, he's gonna take advantage of it. As you can see right now, got a takedown and near fall points coming here for Sattler. Throwing the legs in there, and now the hold broken, and the points will be awarded. Three near fall for Sattler. He goes up five zip. Yep, and looking uh, looks like Sattler likes the cradle. We just got to see if we can defend it. Um, obviously, we're a pretty uh, long, lanky type kid, so sometimes it's just a strength thing too. Oh, trying to fight his way out. There's still a little bit of time, under 10 to go. Long look at ah. him, there's the fall, and Sattler will get it with just four seconds left in the first period, so he gets the Royals on the board with the pin. Yeah, and that obviously is a, a senior veteran, um, definitely gonna you know, look like one too. Go up to 132 now. Why is that a leading at 15 to 6? For Hopkins, the senior Nate, Nate Johnson. Nate Johnson will wrestle for now for Hopkins. Gunner and Gunnar O'Reilly for Wyzetta. Nate Johnson is ranked uh, number 10 for the Royals. Yep, and he's another kid that's he's qualified, been in the state tournament as well, so it does have a lot of experience, some talent. Um, you know, Gunnar. Um, definitely is a competitor that um, has had a solid year so far and um, should, you know, again, one of those matches where you look for that opportunity to, um, on paper, you know, a kid like that, you want to go after him really hard and try to uh, change the outcome. So we'll see what happens. I think it's safe to say that Wyzetta in general wrestles a little bit of a tougher schedule in Hopkins too. So sometimes you're just comparing records isn't really apples to apples too. Correct, I mean, obviously, you know, I think our talents are the quality of competition sometimes, but there's a couple good solid kids and obviously Nate showing why he's ranked in the state right there and um, a, a strong kid. Nice job, and nice job of finishing too. Once he locked this on, they, you know, you look for a guy that, that can be a finisher, and obviously threw that cradle on from the feet there. And at that point, it was uh, it was all but over. Yep, definitely uh, showed his strength there, and um, I'm sure we'll see him in the state tournament again this year. So. At 138 pounds for the Royals, sophomore Clifton Patterson. For Wyzetta, the sophomore Parker Carey. Clifton Patterson for Hopkins, Parker Carey for Wyzetta. As you see, the Royals have tightened it up to 15 to 12, but they're, those were their two big guns right there. And, and being honest about it, probably their big hurrah was right there. But uh, obviously still some very competitive matches to go potentially here. Yes, and, and Parker on paper, this is a match. Parker uh, definitely, you know, I think he's 15 and six and um, their uh, their wrestler is about 500, so you know if you go by that, obviously Parker um, should come out on top. But you know, again, it's one of those things you got to wrestle the match. And I think Parker's another kid, 
sophomore worked really hard um, in the off season, and uh, should be a good match here. And and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Looks like a couple of guys with some strength for this for this weight class too. Yeah, it gives you some an opportunity to you know, in the dual side you get to some flexibility to maybe move some guys around. Um, you know, obviously as we get close to the individual time, then they got to make their decisions on who's going where and who, who's going to cut weight and things like that, who wants to cut weight. And, um, but, uh, you know, Parker's got a bright future ahead of him. And obviously I would say that, uh, you know, Clifton looks like he's a sophomore as well. So, you know, they hang in there and they can uh, develop into something here before they leave their high school. A little blood time here for Parker Carey. And looks like they've got it under control for the moment here. One thing when you get into the winter heating months, it's you're gonna see a lot more nosebleeds. Everything's a lot drier. I mean, you can notice it just in your home. Yep. Yep. And obviously, this is a high. Obviously, there's contact in this sport, so bloody noses kind of comes with the territory with this sport. So. Both guys coming out aggressive. No scoring as of yet, but it has the feel of a match that we are probably gonna see some action. You're not seeing either guy lay back. No, I think really aggressive, really, I think each guy's looking for a good, a, a good shot, a uh, good takedown. So uh, hopefully uh, it'll be nice to see a good match here. And they'll bring him back to the middle here as Patterson looked like he was looking for a throw there. Carey shooting off the whistle but didn't quite get there. in that situation, wow. Yeah, good, a good attempt at a headlock, but the, you know, Hopkins obviously rolled through it, but looks like Parker came out on top and got the finish for the two. Really, the Hopkins guy did a really good job of rolling through on that, so, you know, it could have been a costly five-pointer, but um, looks like we got more blood time. So we saw our flurry of activity there that sure for a moment looked like it might be not just a takedown, but uh, but more there for Kerry. But like you said, Clifton Patterson did not stop and just rolled through it. And that's what sometimes you teach that, you know, if you roll, keep the momentum going when you throw that headlock, that's one way to prevent from getting caught in the headlock. And uh, he knew that. Obviously, at the end, though, Parker kept coming, so he finished it off to get his, get his two before the end of the first period. Jay, do you find that's kind of, for, for younger wrestlers that are learning, the, the part about, you know, continuing to wrestle, not do one move at a time, is that something that takes a little while to learn? Yes. We talk a lot about chain wrestling, so you work from one move to the next. Um, we always tell us sometimes the best time to score is right after you got scored on or, you know, right after you took a shot and you score the best, the next best opportunity is right then. And that's what we call chain wrestling is, you know, going from one move to the next and not giving up. And, uh, you know, good things can happen when you do that. Carey will be down to begin our second period here as Clifton Patterson right, works Parker, from the top. He's coming to his feet. Back up, yeah, yeah. Patterson trying to control that near wrist and flatten him back out, but he's... Oh, good switch. Do it. So score the reversal for Parker Carey. He did a nice job with his leverage on that. Yeah, it looks like he was almost just kind of setting that up and just waiting for the right feel. Sometimes wrestling's about, you know, just that right feel of body awareness. And uh, I think Parker really was setting that up to do that switch right there. And that did a nice job of it. I was just thinking right before that, that Patterson, he, he didn't have a very good grip and maybe should think about cutting him loose. And then yep. sure enough, it happened. Yeah, now he's got to get going. He's just been warm for stalling. And Parker's a pretty good rider. Um, I know that, uh, you know, he's definitely going to look for a fall. Um, 
you know, doing things like you got to be aware of where you're at. So we'll see what happens here. He's got that wrist trap so we can see if you, underneath him, we see if he can, there's a number of different moves that you can go from that. Um, we work, you know, obviously Wayzetta really works hard on that lift and step, we call it. There's a, another move we call the Shriner. If you remember Derek Shriner, we have a move that we uh, have implemented named after him. Um, comes off like a tilt, so to speak, so. Riding him pretty tough. Nice work, Parker. Trying to wear Patterson down a little bit here too. 20 seconds to go here in the period and it's been a good match. Parker Carey leading it by a score of four to nothing, but obviously a lot to be, a lot of time to go, a lot to be determined yet in this match. Yeah, and, you know, Cliff looks like Patterson's a pretty good physical kid too. So, you know, obviously strength is important uh, along with technique. Um, Parker's gonna probably ride, try to ride him out at least for the seven, last seven seconds here. And we'll reach the end of the second period here with Parker Carey still leading at 4 nothing, And Patterson will choose both up here and see if he can't get a big move here from, looks like he likes to work upper body. Yeah, he chose up, so or both up, so obviously feels more confident on his feet. And he's down 4-0, so you know he wants to put him in position to come back. So I think that was probably a good choice on his end. Area almost got a little off balance there, but recovered. Yeah, he's just got to be careful. Parker's one of those kids. He's a goer. I mean, he has a good gas tank. I mean, overall, and he works really hard in the room. Um, you know, I think uh, that won't be an issue, but he just got to, sometimes he just has to be cautious of where he's at. And, uh, you know, a good kid's going to take advantage of those. So, looking for, I'm sure, his opportunity and but Patterson's looks like he's got a you know a goal as well to get a takedown here and maybe more. So it should be a good battle till the end. Yeah, if you're the guy in the lead, you want to stay aggressive, but you don't want to walk into anything big either. A quick you know five point move that can turn the tide in a hurry. Right. Why does that look like we were warned for stalling, backing up a little too much? Um, but, oh, good throw by. We can finish it here. That was a very good move. Terry uh, will get the takedown here to increase his lead, give him a little more room for error at six zip. Parker is one of those that likes to go upper body a little bit as well, you know, and um, obviously a sophomore. So I think he's only, he's got a bright future ahead of him. And we'll see a lot more of what he, I think, just did right now. And he's up 6-1, so now you look at going to get that extra bonus points. Um, but be careful. They'll get to the edge here with 32 seconds to go in the match. And Parker Carey of Wyzetta leading Clifton Patterson of Hopkins in our 138-pound match. 30 seconds. Both guys really staying aggressive. A lot of push-pull, a lot of hand fighting. Good shot off the mat. Not much time left in this one here. And a hard shot and a... Nothing yet, Patterson countered, and they'll get to the edge with no more scoring, so Parker Carey of Wyzetta will win it by a six to one score. Yeah, it was a really good match. I think all the way through and through, it was you know, just solid. You know, no one really made a big mistake or anything like that, so it was good to see. Go to 145 now, and it will be 
Tim Gilseth for Wyzetta. 145 pounds for the Royals, freshman Brandon Yellowrobe. And Yellow Brandon Yellowrobe for Hopkins. Gilseth. See the team score now at 18-12, Wyzetta. Again, this is one of those matches where their kid's about 500. You know, Gil says we're coming in about 13 and 10. Um, obviously, you know, he's a senior and their kid's a uh, freshman. So it could come to that experience factor. Strength could come into play a little bit here too. So uh, I would say Wayzetta is going to be favored in this match. Gil Seth's going to start from neutral. So two to one as Yellow Robe will get the escape point. A lot of good motion here. Up front headlock. Look for the cradle here. Near side cradle locked up. He's got the two already, so now he just got to turn him to his back, try to get near fall. And he is able to pull him back onto the mat pretty easily there if he can uh, drive it forward here. He's still in a decent position, I think, to lock this on. Yep. Yep, he defended it pretty well there, so we'll see. But. I would say cradles are going to be coming from different directions here. Um, and it's going to be a matter of time. Gil said, able to lock it on here and a lot of time to go in the period as well. Yeah, that cradle looks pretty tight. Just got to probably get his shoulders flat. 30 seconds. Well, you pick the hands. Give him three near fall there, but credit to Brandon. He stayed fighting there and didn't give up. Yeah, you like to see that, especially when you're on your back. You know, that's a tough position. And um, 15 seconds here, seven to one. Uh, Ten seconds. That's, in a lot of ways, to me, is one of the fascinating parts of wrestling, too. Within the match, you say, well, okay, your guy's getting dominated, but he didn't stop wrestling there. He got, he stayed with it. He'll get into the second period, still at least has a chance. Right, and over in the, those things add on, on top of each other as you wrestle, like that's how you get better. You know, sometimes it's just the little things and they, you know, they build on each other as you go out and wrestle and it's awareness. You know, he got out of that position. Wrestling's about, you gotta, you're in put in different positions and how you overcome those positions is how you get better. And um, that was a position that he was able to counter and come out of it. So we'll see what happens in, in the second period here. And you often see guys who are maybe in the lineup as a freshman and, and you know, maybe struggle here and there, especially if they're in a, a little bit higher weight. And then by the time they're senior, they're the guy doing the thing, you know, getting things done out there and, and winning a lot of matches too. Yeah. Believe me, when you're a freshman and, you know, you take your lumps a little bit, you don't forget. And when you get older and it's your time to shine, um, you often remind, you're reminded of those things, you know, why you practice and work hard and, do the off-season things um, for that specific reason. So, nine to two lead now for Gilseth. We get a stalling caution there as uh, Yellow Row backing. Yep. Sometimes you know, like again, this is a situation where I think that uh, Gilly's Gilseth's a little more physical, forcing the action, and you know, you're sometimes you're put on the defense a lot more than you want to be. Another front headlock, looking for the cradle, near side cradle again. And he's going to get it, and a fall. So Gilseth, as you said, uh, it was pretty obvious he was probably going to come back to that. And he's able to get the pin. First fall of the night for Wyzetta. Yeah, everything else has been pretty competitive, so... Another look at how he finished him off here. Yeah, it was really a good, you know, that's obviously that front, front headlock to a cradle. Um, it's kind of one of his go-to moves. So uh, we're going to go uh, forfeit at 152. Adam Grassi will pick up a forfeit win for Wyzetta. So we'll go up to 160. At 160 pounds. For Hopkins, it's the senior Justin Grunseth. Justin Grunseth for Hopkins. 
Uh, Elliot Elliot will wrestle for Wyzetta. And Elliot, this is one of his first G or varsity matches here, so um, getting his opportunity to, to wrestle tonight under the light. So we'll see what he can do against a, uh, this Justin Gruntzess. Probably two and nine, I think his record is. So, um, but, but he's had more experience wrestling on the varsity mat. So we'll have to see, I think on paper, I would, would favor Hopkins. Gruntzess gets the takedown and an escape for Omlid here. I think in a lot of these matches, you know, some of the kids know each other, but some don't too. So you come out there and, you know, you're not really sure what you're going to get or how old the other guy is necessarily. And in many cases you do know, but not always. Yeah, and I think like tonight, Elliot, it's his opportunity, you know, to, again, oh, good headlock from Grunseth. We'll have to see if he can defend it. Trying to lift up on that head. Right on the edge of the mat too, but we'll have to see if he can fight off his back here. Run Seth will get the pin here for the Royals. So they actually get their third fall of the night. Yeah, you threw that headlock on. That looked pretty tight. That would have been a tough one to, um, to get out of. And Grunseth, good job of not uh, not getting too, you know, when he almost rolled through it a little bit there, he stayed with it, kept his weight on him. Yeah, he had good balance when he finished that move, and, um, you know, I think... Uh, you know, it was a pretty tough headlock. So here we go with a 170 pound match. Gabe Herman up next year for Hopkins against Dan Herda. And Herda doesn't waste any time getting the takedown there. Yeah, Dan is uh, 19 and 2 this year. Yeah, Dan's really coming on here. Uh, he had a really, he won the Rumble on the Red tournament up in Fargo. Um, and uh, definitely is getting stronger and stronger. And I think. You know, he's going to be ready to go by the end of the year. Um, obviously, very heavily favored in this match. Working on probably, you know, some solid wrestling, making sure he just wrestles at a high level. That's the main thing. Two point takedown for Herda. And Dan, uh, one of two Wyzetta wrestlers that are ranked in the guillotine, as he's ranked number seven. Yeah, and he's, you know, like I said, I think his goal this year is obviously to, you know, place in the state tournament, if not win it. You know, it's going to be a heavily, uh, a very tough tournament, as you know. Um, but uh, you got to still be careful. Don't do anything foolish. 8-3 lead for Herta as he tries to finish him off here. He'll let him up here, so 11 to 4 lead. Good penetration, good shot. I mean, obviously, you know, I think we got to work for the fall here if, if you can. And they'll get the pin right there. As Herda with the fall at a minute 45. So Wyzetta gets its second pin of the night. Now the look obviously hurt a much more experienced and wrestler and it was kind of a matter of time. And I think the, I think he was a little worried about the neck there too. So uh, Mr. Roth there was quick with the, uh, the slap of the hand. Yeah, I mean it's, Physically, he was obviously dominating that match, and I think they needed to he need to work for that fall, and he got it. So, 182. 
the senior, Max Foul. RJ Chicolas for Hopkins, Max Foul for Wyzetta at 182. I think what's impressive about this is Hopkins, this is an eighth grader wrestling at 182. Um, he actually wrestled last year as a seventh grader and placed in the section tournament. And, um, you know, so he's got a bright future ahead of him, you know, being only in eighth grade. Obviously, Max, Max is a solid wrestler, too. Um, you know, he's, you know, between him and Kalen, they both weigh about 182. So it's kind of, you know, again, flexibility, who goes to 95 and who wrestles 182. Um, Max works really hard in the room, good leader. Um, what I've noticed is um, really works hard. Obviously, has good partners. You know, you wrestle Dan Herta and, um, every day, and almost, you know, you're going to get better. So I think this is going to be a good match. Um, both, both guys are a little above 500 overall. And, um, and I see this one could go down to the wire. Both guys working upper body here. Chicola's a little bit shorter guy, and I think he wants to to be able to work for a throw here, maybe, or get underneath him and use that uh, pressure that foul is coming at him with against him. Yeah, and I think, you know, if he does take a shot, it's going to have to be pretty good because, you know, Max being a longer guy has longer, you know, better arms, you know, distance. You know, you're going to have to shoot from a little bit. You've got to get really tight to make the, you know, to finish. But, um, you know, I think Max, both of them are staying pretty aggressive. A lot of just kind of being, they're cautious a little bit right now, looking for that ideal time to shoot. 10 seconds, Max. Pop his elbows up. Big count. Go after Max. Pull. Pull. Max. Forward. Max. So we get to the end of the first period with no score on the board here. Second period. Looks like Chicolas is going down. Um, we'll see if we can, who takes advantage of this position right here. Chicolas got up pretty quick there. Wow, able to bring him back to the mat. Can he do anything with it here? Well, RJ's getting, got up pretty quick. It looks like he's, He's really solid getting up to his feet and, and really staying in good position, being very difficult to bring back to the mat. Um, you know, that's as tiring on the top guy when you got to try to bring him to the mat as much as it is, you know, for the bottom guy to get out. So, you know, we'll have to see if they go to different positions here. Max needs to get some kind of control to keep him down from getting up. And he's working at, you know, some wrist rides, maybe looking for a cradle. Um, we have what's called a butcher, you know, things like that to turn him. But RJ's really, obviously you can tell you, oh, he got a little bit of a, call a false cradle, which is a quick cradle to get points, which I think he's gonna get two. Yep, yep. give him two near fall, so foul on the board first. You know, that's what happens when you're a taller guy, you got that, you don't have to, you can lock up pretty quick um, with a cradle. Especially against a shorter guy. Chocolas has seemed like he was close to getting out on a couple of occasions, but so far not been able to. Yeah, Max just keeps working here. Now he, he's got a leg hooked. Go off the mat. Thirty-nine seconds. So RJ's really worked out or will well trying to get to his feet. That seems to be his go-to. Um, now it's a matter of will and see who reacts first. We got a caution. I think that's the first false start we've seen tonight, actually. Yes, I believe you're right. Oh, oh. I get two in a row. Oh, 
That one's against foul. That one was on where you put your head and he didn't have it in the right place, so he got called for that caution. Again, RJ's to his feet. Oh, that was a good effort on his part, get that one. So he's to within two to one here, and see so you can. Uh, good shot for, oh, good, good attempt by RJ, and Max fought it off here, 14 seconds. Um, pretty impressed for this kid being in eighth grade. Um, you know, definitely he's wrestled a little bit before, too. Ten seconds. And we will reach the end of period number two. Two to one, Max Powell. Of Third period. Powell will choose down. Jacobus, I think, asking, should I cut him loose? Yeah, we'll see if he know if he's a feels confident in his riding, you know, on top. Sometimes you don't feel confident there, so you're confident more on your feet. Max is up. So make it three to one as Fow gets out. But now it's crunch time. Chicolas is eager to get after him. Yeah, and he's staying aggressive, and Max is going to have to really, you know, now you start to, you got to stay aggressive or worry about getting a stalling call, things like that. Because um, I think RJ looks like he's ready to get after it here to get that takedown. Uh, Max probably going to be a little more cautious because he's up three to one. Kind of a fake or half shot there. Oh, he got caught. Headlock by RJ. No. No points. Looked like it was going to be trouble for a moment, but Fow did not panic and he stayed out of it. Max fought that off really well. I mean, look for a minute there. There was going to be some takedown and back points. And then we got nothing. I'm assuming RJ's gonna probably look for some type of some type of throw again, underhook, really trying to force that underhook or something with the head. Looks like RJ, I would assume he's probably done some freestyle, you know, in the off season because he's really working the upper body a lot more, as you can see right here. Good top. We'll have to see. Max is going to get warm for stalling. Fought that attempt at a headlock off. They'll get to the edge with 24 seconds left. Bow protecting a 3 1 lead. Now it really comes down to just staying in good position. Um, RJ really has to go after it here. 15 seconds. Max has got one stalling call on him already. Oh, he gave up uh, two. Well, RJ's going to rally late for the win. The takedown and then three near fall, and he will win it six to three. Well, and RJ went after it. You know, he, he, he got the underhooks. Um, as you look at the replay, and he got, he threw it on the edge and got the takedown and the back point. So he finished all the way to the end. So that's why you go six minutes. You never know what can happen and um, gets the win. Caleb Eugene awarded a forfeit at 195 for YZ. Caleb Eugene, junior winner by forfeit. Max Bunning awarded a forfeit at one at 220. Come on, John, come on, John. And then John Hera of Wyzetta awarded a forfeit at heavyweight. So, boy, if you're Hopkins, you have to be thinking what if here. You know, if, if they had a full lineup, they, they won their share of matches that were actually competed. They yeah. won four matches, and including three pins. But obviously, when you've got, you know, a short lineup like that, it's something you're not going to be able to overcome. Yeah, and that, if, obviously, yeah, I mean, obviously, with the matches that were wrestled, overall pretty competitive there was hardly any falls and um, you know I think uh, 
it's unfortunate for Hopkins, you know, having a short lineup like that and having the forfeits, you know, the, it makes it look kind of more lopsided than it probably would have been, um, you know, as uh, dual meet ends here. So, please drive safely and thank you again for coming out this evening for Trojan Wrestling. So Izetta will pick up the victory here tonight, and the uh, Royals coming up with a few nice wins along the way. Sadler and Johnson and Grunseth getting pins, and Chicola's that great win late, but it is too much to overcome, obviously, the open spots in their lineup. So Wyzetta will win it here tonight. Hope you've enjoyed tonight's match here on CCX Sports. For Jay Perry and all of our crew, I'm Jay Wilcox. Good night from Wyzetta.